Welcome to module 7b. In module 7a, we started discussing model complexity, which is uh, the penalty for learning. Uh, and we learn, meaning that we have a parametric class, again, discussed in module 7a, and we don't know the parameter. And we have a penalty for not knowing the parameter. That penalty is an excess coding length. So what we'd like to do in this module is design a model class C that minimizes the excess coding length. And specifically, C is uh, basically going to be a quantizer. And the cardinality of C will depend on N. It'll grow with N. But you may ask excess coding length with respect to what? So let's think about the correct coding length. The correct coding length is the hypothetical scenario where we know theta, and let's analyze the coding length. We're going to look at the simplest case, single parameter, binary IID samples xn, the sequence x will be comprised of n samples or n bits. Its true probability, denoted by p of x, will be theta, the probability of a 1 to the power of n1 of x, the number of ones in the data, multiplied by 1 minus theta, the probability of a 0, to the power of n0 of x, the number of zeros in the data. And just like in this expression, on the left-hand side, p of x, there's a dependence on x. On the right-hand side, I modified the notations n0 and n1. I added the dependence on x. I made it explicit in order to highlight that the right-hand side is also specific, dependent on the data x. And if that's the probability, then uh, the length of x is minus log base 2 of p of x. So now let's ask ourselves, that was the ideal, well, that was the correct coding length. We, we knew theta, but now we'll ask, what's ideal? Ideal meaning, what's the lowest coding length? So instead of the correct theta, let's use theta i, the ideal theta i. We now have the length of x using theta i. It's equal to the log base 2 of probability of x with theta i. And this expression is very similar to the probability for x as before, but instead of theta and 1 minus theta to the powers of n1 and n0 respectively, we're now using theta i to the power of n1, 1 minus theta i to the power of n0. We can simplify this expression by taking the n0 and n1 outside the logarithms, giving us minus n1 of x log of theta i minus n0 of x log of 1 minus theta i. Now, now recall, we said ideal coding length, ideal theta i, meaning that the expression for the coding length, if we take its derivative, it must be 0. What is the derivative? Minus n1 of x times the derivative of log of theta i. If it was natural logarithm, it was, this would be easy, 1 over theta i, but it's not natural, it's log base 2. So we need a correction term. So we do have 1 over theta i, but with a correction term. The derivative of the second expression, minus n0 of x times the derivative of 1 minus theta i. The derivative of the log of 1 minus theta i is 1 minus theta i times the derivative of 1 minus theta i itself, which is minus 1. The minus 1 multiplied by negative n0 of x gives us the plus sign. And of course, we, we have the correction terms before. It turns out that the optimal theta i is equal to n1 divided by n. And recall that earlier, we said that the true, the true parameter theta is the probability of 1. And n1 divided by n is the number or the probability of ones in our data, which we called the empirical probability. And we denoted it by theta EMP. 
So let's start thinking about how to design our uh, model class. We want it to minimize the excess coding length with respect to this idealized coding length, which is abstain, obtained with theta i. And our approach is we don't know theta. Uh, we look at the data. We calculate n0 and n1. That allows us to calculate the empirical probability. And the empirical probability is quantized. Uh, and finally, we use the uh, representation level of the quantizer uh, to encode the data x. What is this quantizer? Let's have a simplifying assumption that we have Q quantization bins. And the next simplifying assumption will be that uh, all the bins have the same width, 1 over k. So the structure of our uh, quantizer as sketched here, the first bin is from 0 to 1 over k, or 1 over q. Second bin from 1 over q to 2 over q. Then 2 over q to 3 over q, and so on, up to the last bin ends with 1. So overall, we started with 0, we ended with 1. That's our probability space for a possible parameter. And theta empirical is quantized within this space. OK, so Q quantization bins, each of them have the same, each of the bins have the same width. And additionally, all the bins, each bin corresponds to a model. And we said that in part one of a two-part code, we describe the bin, we describe the model, and we'll say that each of these models have the same coding length, log base two of Q. What is Q? We're going to take Q being equal to n to the power of alpha, and we're going to optimize alpha. Why n to the power of alpha? Why not some other form for the dependence of Q on N, oh, we'll see that it comes out of the math. So, so now, what's the overall probability for our data X? It's PC of X using this correct uh, or best model divided by Q, where this correct model was really quantized. Instead of, instead of theta empirical, we have theta empirical plus a quantization error. Well, recall the bin is of width uh, 1 over q. q is n to the alpha, so 1 over q is n to the minus alpha. We could have a quantization error uh, if the representation level is in the middle up to half n to the minus alpha, but forget about the half. Let's just say that we have quantization errors up to n to the minus alpha. So the length is in the first part of the two-part code, part one, log base two of n to the alpha. And in the second part, we have n1 of x minus n1 of x times the log of the theta i plus a correction term. And we also have minus n0 of x times log of 1 minus theta i minus a correction term. So one time the uh, quantization error is positive, the other time it's negative. So let's uh, Let's analyze things. Let's uh, specifically optimize alpha. And we're going to focus on the second part of our coding length, which we denote by length prime. Uh, it's equal to minus n1 of x times the log of theta i plus the correction term minus n0 of x times log of 1 minus theta i minus the correction term. So let's, uh, let's analyze this more carefully. Uh, minus n1 of x instead of log of theta plus correction will modify that expression into log of theta i plus log of 1 plus correction over theta i. Similarly, changing colors, uh, minus n0 log of 1 minus theta minus correction, that log will become the log of 1 minus theta i, the ideal logarithm plus log of 1 minus the correction term over 1 minus theta i. Now, let's think for a moment what's happening here. Minus n1 log theta minus n0 log 1 minus theta is equal to the ideal coding length. 
we're focusing on the second part of the code. In addition to the ideal coding length, we're paying in the first part of the code, log base two of Q, but we'll revisit that. For now, we're more interested in this other excess coding length, minus N1 log of one plus correction over theta I, minus N0, one minus correction over one minus theta I. So to analyze this, uh, this expression, let's, uh, let's perform a Taylor expansion of uh, the logarithms. The logarithm base two of one plus X, its Taylor expansion is constant number one times X plus constant number two times X squared and so on. Uh, the constants don't really matter right now. And let's begin with a first order uh, expansion. Let's uh, ignore C2. So um, we had n1 of x log of 1 plus n to the minus alpha over theta i. So this n to the minus alpha over theta i is what we multiply by. And then we have for the second term, the x in the log base two of one plus x is minus correction term over one minus theta i. So we're now multiplying by n to the minus alpha over one minus theta i. And the minus sign is incorporated here. The sign was flipped because of the minus sign. All right, let's, let's move on. Uh, n1 of x is n times theta i. n0 of x is n times 1 minus theta i. So now we have theta i over theta i cancel out. 1 over minus, or 1 minus theta i cancels out. n cancels out. c1 cancels out. Everything cancels out. The first order term is zero. So this expression from before, uh, the excess coding length is zero with a first order approximation. So we need a second order approximation. Um, we're just gonna make a very small modification. C1 becomes C2. Yeah, we know that the first order is zero, so we're just immediately going to, to the second order terms. Um, and in addition to C2, we are squaring n to the minus alpha over theta and n to the minus alpha over 1 minus theta. And you'll note this minus sign. The reason for it is as follows. Earlier, we had the trick where the minus became a plus. But now, um, because we're squaring things, we don't have a minus anymore. So we still have, we don't flip signs. We're still minus. And overall consolidating terms, we have minus constant. And uh, the constant happens to be negative. n to the power of 1 minus 2 alpha multiplied by 1 over theta plus 1 divided by one minus theta. So the key, the key, key, key here is n to the power of one minus two alpha. And keeping in mind that key term, let's bring back the first part and the overall length, you know, we just, we were discussing, analyzing in detail length prime of the second part, the overall length is the log base two of n to the alpha plus the constant C3, which absorbs this dependence on theta, constant three, uh, C3 times n to the one minus two alpha. Let's discuss uh, ranges of alphas. If alpha is less than half, that means that one minus two alpha is positive, n to the positive number is polynomial. The polynomial second part dominates the logarithmic first part. Uh, what about alpha being greater than or equal to half. In that case, we have 
n to the power of a number which is less than or equal to zero. And therefore, the, uh, the second excess coding length term is one or even less than that. And that vanishes relative to the log, the first term. So what, what matters now is the first part, log base two of n to the alpha. And we minimize that by having alpha equal to half. And we need square root of n quantization bins. That is module 7b. We'll continue next time.